Lord. Put your hands together, celebrate Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Celebrate the Lord. Let's put our hands together, celebrate Reverend Isaac Kahora. Let us have our seats in God's presence. Many of us know the song, but many of us don't know that it is his original song. He's the one who composed and sang the song. That's his song. I, I like that you're looking at me like, what? Yes. Yes, you can pay school fees after this. Amen. Are we being blessed? Are we being blessed? Are we being blessed? Guess what? Tell your neighbor, welcome to October. Tell them, happy new month. Imagine God has kept us to the month of October. What a mighty God we serve. Amen, amen, amen. God is gracious. And, you know, just for us to be here. This year we have buried so many people that you didn't know which funeral to go and which one to skip. True or not true? You sitting here worshiping God are a miracle. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, if you're looking for a miracle, a miracle number 001. Yes, they need to know that you're the first miracle. Hallelujah, praise God. I'm going to be speaking to us about recovery. Somebody shouts recovery. I've been speaking about this for the last three days, and today I'm just going to wrap it up. And then we're going to get into a session of miracles. Amen. Hallelujah. Time flies really fast when you're in God's presence. Can you imagine? It's 20 minutes to 4 a.m. And I'm saying, ah, but where did time go to? Time has just flown. But I'm just going to speak to us. I'm, I'm going to give you a recap about what I've been speaking about. And then I'm going to take it home. Amen. 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 I am just so blessed to be here. I'm glad to be back to the country. I'm glad to see everyone in MSG. It's been a minute, but to God be the glory. Amen. So we're going to go to the book of Luke chapter 15, and I'm going to be reading verses 8 to 10. Luke 15, 8 to 10. Kitabucha Luka Mlango wa Kuminatano Dirisha Yanane Apo. It's not Dirisha. Don't go to quote me, and then you leave the church laughing. Amen. Luke 15. Are we there? If you're there, shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in verse 8. Somebody say verse 8. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Somebody say one. She has 10, but she has lost this is NIV. I don't like NIV. Do you have NKJV? Okay, change it. Change it. Um, a lot of Bible meaning is lost in translation. So I like staying with the kings. I stay there with KJV or New King James. Unless I'm looking for something very specific, then we go to the Amplified. So the Bible says, Or suppose a woman. Are you saying we already lost with, uh, with, with, with the other version? has 10 silver coins. Somebody say 10. They have 10, 10. Somebody, think, say, somebody say 10,000. Say 10 million. Say 100 million. But this woman only loses one, 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 one. So out of 10,000, you lose 1,000. Out of 10 million, you lose, you lose 1 million. Watch this. The Bible say, doesn't she light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. That means it is not okay, it is not normal for you to lose things and sleep. If you're that person who loses money and you say, it's okay, I'll find another one, we need to lay hand, lay leg, lay shoe and wake you up. This woman loses one coin and the Bible writes about her to show us that there is something wrong when you lose something in life. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, do not be comfortable with loss. Turn to the other one, tell them, do not be comfortable with loss. This woman loses one. She still has nine in the pocket, but she will not sleep. Some of you want to say she was a kiku. She's not kiku, she's a wise woman. You're looking and saying, ah, the reason why Apostle is preaching from that is because she's kiku, she understands money. Yes, I understand money, but this is wisdom for living. That this woman 
loses one out of ten, but something in her spirit will not settle. Now watch this. It is not during the day. This woman is a strange woman. How did she know at night that she had lost something? Because the Bible tells us that she lights a lamp. You don't light a lamp during the day unless something is wrong with your sobriety. If we find you during the day lighting lamp, we will call you for special deliverance prayer. So it must have been during the night for this woman to light a lamp. You need to be spiritually alert. That when the enemy comes to steal something from you, when he thinks that you're comfortable, you wake up. Because it was in the night, but she was spiritually sensitive to know that something has departed from her life. The Bible says that when men slept, the enemy came and sowed bad seed. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, you need to be alert, you need to be awake. It is in that moment of slumber. God is saying, come to one night with the king. You're saying, oh, I need to sleep so that uh, I can start October when I am full of sleep. You will have October that is sleepy. You won't even know what is happening. A woman, how did this woman know that she had lost a coin in the night? This scripture is talking to us about spiritual sensitivity. That you can tell that the enemy is about to afflict you. There is no sign, there is nothing that is saying that the enemy is about to afflict you, but your spirit can pick the enemy a million miles from where he is. And you can tell him, not my house, not my life, not my children, not before he even shows up, you tell him, I am serving you notice. So the woman loses one and she wakes up. Maybe if this woman pretended that uh, one is not too much, by the time she's, we are reading this scripture, she will have lost ten. Because the enemy doesn't mind stealing and stealing and stealing. His mandate is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Do you know that many people today who are suffering from satanic affliction, it started with a small thing. It started with small headache. You said, ah, I think it's the sun. I th now you're a specialist of why people get headache. All of a sudden, you're a doctor. You never went to one school. But you can tell people why you have a headache. So you started explaining problems. Before you knew it, he said, uh, even that, that one you've qualified, you have a PhD in headache. He threw stomach cake. Then you started saying, this, I can associate this headache and the stomach cake. Because before this headache, I didn't have stomach. Are you seeing how the enemy sneaks into people's lives? Then it becomes stomach cake. So this person has qualified for two problems, headache and stomach cake. But instead of saying, live my life, they are trying to draw an association and correlation. Sometimes we are too intellectual for our, for our, for our destruction. Then you have headache and not you. That person is not in MSG tonight. They are the ones that are sleeping outside there. Uh -huh. So this person has headache, stomach ache. Then there is leg ache. They are saying, God must be speaking to me. He doesn't want me to walk. He wants me to, to buy a car. That's why my leg is aching because it's in preparation to drive car. You wait for that car to come and then you will share testimony. The enemy keeps afflicting people. By the time he has conquered somebody's body, they become a prayer point. This woman woke up at night and said, Hey, where is my one shilling? Maybe her name was Wairimo like me. She said, my one shilling, where is it? I want it. She said, where, hmm, where is the lamp? Let us light it very quickly. They lit the lamp. She did not see it. Then... She did not give up because the light did not show her where it is. The Bible says, and she began to sweep. Many of you will say, I prayed one prayer. That thing did not come back. Lazy Christians, lazy Christianity of lazy people never achieved anything in this life. The Bible says, she begins to sweep the house. And this woman is not sweeping the house. So that she can just sweep it and say, oh, I lost money, I swept the house, I didn't find it. No, this is an intellectual woman. This, this, is, this is a woman that is spiritually alert. The Bible says she sweeps the house and searches carefully. You, the last time you were sweeping the house, you were just throwing dust out, saying, if only I can get down with this. So that I can. This woman, is do there is something that she is doing with her life. Church of Jesus Christ, as we come to the month of October, we need to be alert, we need to be awake. 
This is the month where you tell the enemy, not this month. Not any week in the month of October. Not any of my days. Not any hour, not any minute, not any second. I have no contract with you. The month of October, God has given me as a blessing. Me and you are not sharing anything. There is no nusumkate in my... Hey, you need to tell the enemy what you don't expect. Because if you keep quiet, he doesn't mind sneaking in his agenda. You tell the enemy, I am coming to the month of October. Because I have a purpose and I have a reason in this life. And I am going to live to see it. October, I will not be number one at Kenyatta Hospital. Number two, Nairobi Hospital. Number three, Aga Khan. Number four, we are saying now, do we carry you to the local um, hospital? That is not you. When we were coming, there was such a nasty accident on Thika Road. And I said, devil, those people would rather live. In the month of October, we are saying, no one associated with us is going to die. Ha! What you don't say, you don't see. This is a night for you to set your October in motion. This is a night where you say, in October, I am not going for any funeral. There shall be no loss in my own household. You need to tell the enemy, this is her. This is how my October is going to be. You are not here to set the standard for me. This is my October. God has given me life because he has a purpose for me. And it does not include satanic affliction. If you're quiet, you're here just dancing, happy new month, eh, you're just celebrating, wearing makeup and perfume. Eh, the enemy has been here before you were born. He's saying, keep dancing without makeup and perfume. I teach you two lessons. Mm. Keep coming. You're dancing and you're saying, come and see. Eh, it's new. You don't just dance into a new month. You begin to prophesy what you want to see. Because if you cannot be the prophet of your destiny, guess what? You're setting yourself up to fail. Don't wait for me, the, the little prophecy I give you on Sunday. You cannot live on that one. It is not adequate. You need to be the prophet of your own destiny. That you wake up this morning and you say, October, here I come and I am coming for glory. Because the Bible says that I am not called to shame and reproach, but to virtue and honor. Whatever is not honorable, depart from my mouth. You wake up and say, October, oh, gates of October, open up good fortune for me because I am here to be a partaker of good fortune. You look at the month of October and say, I know that the cost of living is going up, but October, listen to my voice. It doesn't matter whether fuel is going to be 300. <laughs> I am coming to this month to prosper. Somebody just needs to stand up and begin. Just stand up and begin to prophesy to this month because we are already in it. Stand up, begin to prophesy to it. Tell this month what you want to see. What you cannot see, you cannot say. What you cannot say, you can never take a hold of. It is time for you to begin to prophesy. It is time for you to begin to tell the month of October. Yakuri bahanda raboshente ribakai. Rededere yakarama hande yakuriante. It is time for you to begin to tell the month of October that I am coming to this month to fulfill my divine destiny. Hey, I am coming to this month for me to fulfill the reason for which God created me. You need to prophesy to this month. And you need to tell this month, I will not be a victim of circumstances. Somebody needs to tell this month that my going out and my coming in is blessed. You need to talk to the month of October. And you need to tell the month of October, as people come down, I am rising up. Because the Bible says that when men say that there is a casting down, for us as children of God, we are going to say that there is a lifting up. I don't know about you. I don't know what you want to see. But a time has come for you to stop sleeping in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You just need to speak to your mouth. You need to prophesy. Talk, 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 talk. Prophesy. You are the prophet of your destiny. Begin to tell the month of October. Ah! <laughs> I will not be buried in this month. I will not have no assignment with premature death. My children will not die in this month. Whoever is being fired 
It is not me. Whatever business is going down, it is not my business. Whoever is going to be disgraced, it is not my head that is a candidate for disgrace in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a time for us to begin to speak, to prophesy to the man that is coming. Because you are having an opportunity to be with the king. This is one night with the king and this is your moment of glory. You need to tell the month of October. Whatever is going to destroy men and women in October. Hey! My name is not in that list. My name is not in the list of the people that will be destroyed. My name is in the list of the people that will prosper. Talk to this man. Talk to this man. You see, the church is so quiet. The church is comfortable with the enemy creating an agenda for you. And he creates a satanic agenda. Time has come for us to change how things work. Can you say, I will not be buried this month? Premature death is not your portion. Accidents are not our portion. We shall not be the bad story that will be your news in this nation in the name of Jesus. We shall only make good news. When men and women are looking for stories that can inspire human beings, they will see us. When people are looking at people that God has blessed, they will look for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, have your seats. The Bible says that the woman sweeps and she looks carefully until she finds it. Let me tell you, you'd rather be a man or a woman on assignment. And that your assignment is that if God gave it to you, you cannot take it from me. Satan, you cannot, this one you will not touch. Because the reason that, why, that, that God gives that thing to you is for you to be meaningful in life. You know, God doesn't give you things because he doesn't have time to, to do anything else. God doesn't create people like there. I see my daughter creating things with those Lego things. So she creates, she says, I don't think the head should be blue today. It should be green. So she changes the head to be green. God is not patapotea. God is a God of purpose. And if God gave you a gift, he gave it to you so that you can fulfill your divine destiny with it. So when the enemy comes and steals something from you, don't say, oh, God is gracious. He knows it's the, God, God doesn't know it's the enemy. The Bible says this woman looks for it until she finds it. Tonight is a night of recovery. <laughs> I don't know if I'm speaking to anyone here. Can I submit to you that the reason why many Christians are, don't have any beautiful story to share is because the things that God gave to them that would have made them great, the enemy stole them. And the Christians were too comfortable to fight for it. They say, ah, ah, these things, they happen in Kenya. They happen in Kenya. See your life. They happen in Kenya. It is time for you when the enemy touches something that belongs to you, you tell them, come back, come back. Come <laughs> Before you get, come back, bring it back. It was given to me. David, ability to play harp with his fingers, rescued his life. If he was not useful to Saul, Saul would have killed that boy a long time ago. But any time Saul was frustrated by evil spirits, he said, bring that boy who can play harp, bring him. His fingers, fingers. Somebody's today finger will be cut, they will say, ah, this one, at least I have five, four more. They will not even bother. Christians were too lazy, good for nothing Christians. They're just sitting there and they are encouraging themselves, saying, ah, at least I have four. Let me tell you, whatever God has given you, you must keep it to the end. Because if you lose anything along the way, you will, you will become our prayer point. And me, me, I'm not your prayer partner in that prayer point. Oh. I want to pray to push you to destiny. I do not want to pray for your laziness or the consequences of your laziness. I want you to tell me, this is what I'm trusting God for. I say, please, count me in that prayer point. I'm pushing you to that place of destiny. You might not look like it, but I'm standing with you. I believe in you and we can achieve it. The woman sweeps at night. I'm sure the neighbor is saying, that woman who pretends she's clean, she sweeps in the... She didn't care what the neighbor was going to say. Most of you are so afraid about what people are going to say that you don't do anything meaningful with your life. Or you think when you're, sweep, when you're sweeping your house is a secret. 
try to sweep this place. Everybody will know there's a, there's a broom that is, that is passing the ground. And she decides to sweep and look for something. Whatever the enemy has stolen in your life, tonight he releases it in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you lost knowingly or unknowingly, tonight is a night of recovery. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not live life at 80%. You have to live at 100% for you to fulfill your divine destiny. Sarah, it was her beauty. Beautiful woman. Kai, beauty. This one that you say, oh, you look at a beautiful woman, you say, they're just beautiful. Mm, the beauty is in the heart. Like, that, that, that's your story. Go read about Sarah. It was her beauty that we see that opened doors for them. We look at things and then we, 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 we do not have value for them. We think, what is it about? Anything that God has given you, do not despise it. It is a key to open a door for you. And anything that God has given you that you despise, guess what? It will never work for you. It won't. You might be as anointed like the person who is, you know, they, they have all anointing well in their heads. But it will not work. Anything you despise will not work in your life. Anything you mama and complain about will never work in your life. Some of you, God made you tall. You can't, you can't let us eat our ugali in peace. You're complaining. Oh, if I was shorter, I would have qualified. Ah, why don't you stay with your height? Let us see what God wants to do in your life. You're despising that height and God says, ah, you've despised this. So let us see what will happen to your life. The Bible says that the children of Israel complained. They murmured. They complained. And God said, you're complaining about meat. Don't worry. I'll give you people meat. And the Bible said immediately it got to their throat. They died. It stuck on their throat and they died. As we come to October, whatever it is that God has placed in your hands, you would rather start appreciating it. Don't think that the world is going to appreciate what God has given you. The world has their own issues. Or the world has their own envies and jealousies. Or the world is too preoccupied with their own things. Celebrate yourself. The Bible says David reached a place and the Bible says and David encouraged himself in the Lord. You need to get to a place where you encourage yourself, appreciate yourself in the Lord. If you're waiting for us to come and tell you, oh, you're beautiful, you're handsome. Wait, the, the issues that I have in my head, that's not what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about the next crusade. Get to a place where you acknowledge that you're God's gift. Get to a place where you value you. The moment you begin to value yourself, when the enemy comes to take something, you will fight for it. But if you don't value yourself, when he takes something, you say, ah, but this life, the way I've struggled in life, in fact, this life, we're just waiting for Jesus to come. But then he's not coming tomorrow. You will be 99 and you'll be waiting for him. Why? Because the Bible says that Jesus will come for a glorious church. What we are seeing today is not glory. A church that cannot feed itself is not a glorious church. A church that cannot heal the sick is not a glorious church. A church that is not raising the dead is not a Read your Bible. Jesus says in John 14, 12, that whatsoever I have done, you shall do much more. That is the church that has achieved what Jesus did and did much more. That's the church that Jesus is coming from. So don't, don't give us pressure here. Hey, Jesus is coming. To, he's not coming. I don't need to read the Bible to tell you that he's not coming. I need to look at the state of the church and tell you he's not coming. Because he's a king and he's coming for glory. He's not coming for a defeated church. Am I speaking to anyone here? Because some of you don't even want to work so hard in life because you're just waiting for Jesus to come. He's not coming. Home. You stay like that. You will die of hunger. God forbid. Oh, you are not here in the year 2000. Some of you are too young. The year 2000, what told Jesus is coming. People sold their property. Ah, you people, you know you were born in good times. In 2000, at the turn of the millennium, we were told Jesus is coming. Jesus is not coming for a church that is confused. He's coming for a glorious church. And it is our responsibility to be glorious. And when we become glorious, wherever we go, we carry glory. The Bible says that Christ in us, the hope of glory. The woman searches, the Bible says, until she finds it. What is it that you have lost in your life? And you're looking in your life, at your life, and as I'm preaching today, you're saying, that thing, I shouldn't have lost it. That friendship, I shouldn't have lost it. Let us talk. Because there are some people that God brought to your life. You looked at them, you said, this one, 
that doesn't even know how to match shoe and handbag. I don't need them in my life. You know, some of you are too, uh, too sophisticated for people. The blessings of God don't look like blessings. They look like work. They look like somebody who is coming in your life and they just need you to tell them. By the way, this green one you don't put uh, with maroon. At least try green and white. Let us see if it works. Try to balance color. God brings things that you ought to work for and that is his blessing. Some of you burnt relationships because you look at them and say, now this one, this one who can't even compare uh, at 90 degrees like this. How can they be my friend? You lost somebody who should have opened a door for you. It was a house girl that blessed a king and said, if you can go to this river and wash, dip yourself seven times. As we come to the month of October, anything that you have lost, I decree and I declare recovery in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare that which you lost knowingly or unknowingly, you're recovering it in the month of October in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will not live this life trying to figure out why you're here. But in the month of October, number two, you shall be very clear about what your purpose in life is. Some people lost their purpose. They look at this life and say, why am I even here? They don't know. Can I tell you that you're here to glorify God? And it is time for you to arise and to begin to glorify God in whichever area he has put you in. If he has put you in music, glorify God in music. If he has put you here to preach, preach. If he has put you to write books, write the books. If he's put you in business, do that business like no one else can do it better than you. Whatever it is that God has entrusted you with, my sister, sell clothes. Sell them, sell them, sell them. And I prophesy to you, you will open a boutique and you will sell clothes in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever God has put in your hands to do, pursue it. Pursue it with everything that you have. I was preaching here on Sunday and I said, the owner of Honda, global car, car company, was a motorbike, not even motorbike, bicycle repairer. Bicycle. Imagine if God called you today, come repair bicycle. You will tell God, with all this anointing that I carry, bicycle. God, at least you should have said, repair boat. You'll be trying to advise God. But a man who studied how to repair bicycles, even in his death, he's one of the richest men in the world. Honda. Whatever that God has put in your hands, this month, don't let it die in your hands. Make use of it. Begin to plan for it. Begin to see it grow. Begin to invest in it. Begin to pray for it. And tell that dream, you dream, you shall grow. You shall amount to something. Do you know the biggest businesses that you see, they didn't grow one day. They started from somewhere. They struggled the first year, struggled the second year. But the owner of the business refused for the business to die. You have to refuse for things in your life to die. If you see death coming, you say, hey, death, I have no appointment with death. The Bible says that Christ has come that I may have life and have it in abundance. So if you see that, you tell that not, not my business, not my home, not my children, not my relationships, not me. Why? Because Christ has come that I may have life and have life in abundance. I want you to be up on your feet. Begin to speak life in your business, in your career, in your giftings, in your calling. Begin to call forth life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Do not sit down and the enemy is trying to sneak in death. Begin to speak to that business. Speak to that business. Tell your business, you shall succeed. Talk to your career. Tell your career, you shall succeed. Talk to your gifting. Tell your gifting, you shall succeed. You need to prophesy to it. Tell that, oh, Rabohan Rabakai. Tell that song, that song, I see you have 25 million views. You need to prophesy to yourself. Open your mouth and begin to talk to your giftings. What is it that God has told you to do? Begin to prophesy to it and speak to it and tell it you shall work, you shall work. This October, I shall have profits from you. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This is the month of our business ventures. We shall collect profit in the name of Jesus Christ. People will think that, ah, yeah, 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 we are lucky. What they don't know is that we were here doing business with God. That we attended the one night with the king. And we spoke to our businesses and said, you business. <laughs> By the end of this month, I want to see at least 100 million in my account as profits. If you don't speak it, you will not see it from where. Your business, your career, your ministry is struggling. Begin to speak to it. Talk to your ministry and say, my ministry, you cannot struggle. I speak life to you. My business, I speak life to you. My career, I speak life to you. My relationships, I speak life to you. My children, I speak life to you. My home, I speak life to you. Begin to speak life. My finances, I speak life to you. My health, I speak life to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we shall never be victims of life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, wherever it is that the enemy has thrown the spirit of death, tonight we command that spirit of death to live. In the mighty name of Jesus, and you begin to experience life. In Jesus' mighty name, as you have said, so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let us have our seats in God's presence. Now watch this. The Bible says that they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. This scripture is written in the book of Revelation. But this is a wise woman. The Bible says in verse 9 that when she finds that one coin, she calls her friends and neighbors and says, rejoice with me, I have found I have found I have found my lost coin I am here to tell you that whatever God does for you you need to give a testimony concerning it unless you want to lose it they overcame him the devil by the word by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony whatever you cannot testify concerning you cannot keep is a scriptural law and Jesus says in the book of John 10 that that scripture cannot be broken so you won't be the first one to break it. The woman finds her one coin. She doesn't say, oh, thank God, now I have ten. No, she calls her friends and says, there is a reason for me to celebrate. Why? Because this is a woman that has valued her coin. And because she finds it, she says, you people need to come. We need to rejoice. Because something of value has been recovered. I decree and I declare that in the month of October we shall be having celebration upon celebration as we celebrate God, as we testify of the goodness of God, as we tell people see what the Lord has done. And in the same measure, the Bible says, in the same way I tell you there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God when one sinner repents. This October, we are winning souls. The Bible says that he who wins souls is wise. If you're looking for wise people, look at what they do when they meet a sinner. Most of you are fine. They're like, okay, don't worry. Okay, you're a sinner. You want, you, want, you, you want to comfort them to sin until they die as sinners. The month of October is a month of soul winning. If you can put your agenda in the agenda of God, if you can have your priorities as God's priorities, you cannot struggle in this life. October, we are winning souls. Whatever, whatever it is that you need to do to win souls, do it. I remember back in the day, we used to go to town. We used to have um, like numbers. We would say, this month I'm bringing 30 souls to the kingdom. Me, Evangelist Simon, and some MSG people, we would go to town after our Tuesday Bible study. We used to have Bible study in town. We will leave the Bible study and we will walk in town until your number has reached you, even if you woke up to 1 a.m. And God was so faithful, he kept us. And at the end of the month, if you had said 30 souls, by mid-month, your 30 souls are already in. You need to give yourself a target of souls that you can win. Why? Because when you win souls, guess what? The angels of God begin to celebrate. They cannot celebrate about God and God doesn't say, hey, why are you celebrating about? They say, sister so and so, she has been just bringing souls consistently to the kingdom. As you recover all, you need to make sure that God is also recovering souls. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It is very important that as we recover our things, that we also help the kingdom of heaven recover souls. Put your own target. Say that this month I am going to win 50 souls. Whatever it is, if you want to start with what, maybe you've never won any soul anywhere. You go to talk to them and then they tell you, at least have one target. Two, you can say one week, every week I'll be winning one soul. The moment you do this, you begin to capture airtime in heaven. He that wins souls is wise. What does that mean? That there is nothing that can outsmart you in life. Why? Because as you win souls, God increases your wisdom. You win another soul, God increases wisdom. You win another soul, God increases wisdom. There is nothing in life that will outsmart you. Why? Because the Bible says that wisdom is justified by her children. This month we are so dangerous soul winners. Whatever it is that you need to do to win souls this month, do it. Do it. If it is you bringing your friends together for tea, tell them, oh, I haven't seen you people for a long time. You know they're not born again. No. I haven't seen you. Come to my house for tea. Cook tea, mandazi, uh, whatever it is for them. Let them come to your house. Preach Jesus. Win souls. Schools are open. Go win souls. I remember we started with 30 and then we got to a place and we used to say we have to win a thousand souls a month and we did that. We are not successful by chance. It's not a chance thing. There are things we have done in the kingdom of God that speak for us. Am I speaking to anyone? There are things that we have done in the kingdom of God that when the enemy sees us, he says, oh, that one, if I touch that one, is, is chaos. She will destroy. There are things that you do that makes God to be invested in your life. And you need to be not just useful to human beings. Human beings, they come and their glory is like the grass. It fades away and it with us. You need to be valuable to God. That when the enemy tries you, God says like Job, that one you cannot touch. And Satan even had a testimony of Job. They said, ah, this Job, the one that you have put a hedge around him. It is important that in the month of October, God has a testimony concerning you. They're not asking God, hey, God, do you know Sister So and so? They say which Sister So and so. We know that God knows you. This is just an example. They need, God needs to say, ah, don't touch that sister. That sister is useful in the kingdom. Very useful in the kingdom. It is time for us to appreciate in value in the presence of God. That when your name is mentioned like this in the courtroom of heaven, ha! Angels wake up and they say, this is the one that causes us to dance and rejoice every day. This one you cannot touch. We are coming and we are now in the month of October. It's going to be a moment of glory. This month of October, whatever you thought that cannot be achieved by mind, you will achieve it. Whatever takes many years to achieve, this month is only a few days. But we will achieve what men take years to achieve in a month. Why? Because we know that everything that we had lost, we have recovered. Number two, the priorities of God are our priorities. Soul winning. If you see any sinner, please spend time with them. Don't look at them and say, oh, I just want to hang out with people who are born again. You can never win souls if you stay in the church. Because in the church, most of the people are born again. It is outside. It's in the marketplace that people are not born again. Have a target for souls. As I wrap up, the Bible says in Joel chapter 2, verse 25, and I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, the great army which I sent among you. The best gift that God can give to man is time. Somebody say time. God is saying, I will restore to you the years. In life, you can achieve anything, but you can never recover time. And God is saying that I will restore to you the years. He's not saying I will restore to you one day, two days. He's saying any year that I look and I see you did not fulfill destiny, you're recovering it. So be ready to see extreme success in your life. People are going to look at you and say, 
that church that you went to, that one that you say is called MSG, what is it that those people teach you? You tell them God says that he will restore my wasted years. Any year that God presented you with and you did not achieve any success, God is saying he's going to restore it to you. And time has come for us to be mindful of the days that we have. Do not waste your time because you cannot recover time. I want us to be upon our feet. I want us to lift our hands before God. And I want us to thank God because he's going to restore to us the years that we have lost, the years that the enemy wasted. This is going to be a month of recovery. Hallelujah. Let us lift up our hands before the Lord. Father, we give you glory and we honor you. We thank you for the recovery, for the restoration of the years that we have lost. We thank you, Lord, because right now you are going through our life and looking at the wasted years, looking at the wasted time, looking at years, we struggled and achieved nothing. And you're saying to us that you were restored to us. Father, as our hands are lifted up in total surrender to you, we receive, we receive, we receive uh, the wasted years. We receive the gift of life. We receive the gift of time in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And this month of October is going to be a month of signs, miracles, and wonders in Jesus' name. And everybody shouted, Amen, Amen, Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Celebrate Jesus. Anyone here who is considered unemployed or jobless, you're struggling financially, step forward. You're struggling financially. You don't have a job. You've just been struggling to make ends meet. You, this is your night with the king. Step forward. Please, you, you come forward. It's not me who's calling you. Come. God is about to do something in your life. I want us to know something, church. The Bible says that above all things I wish that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. God wants you to prosper. Why? Because you're a representation of God. Can you imagine if God created you in his image, what, what makes you think he would like you to fail? Lift up your hands. I release an ability for you to make money in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I release resources. I release open doors to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As you leave this place, the month of October is going to be a month of open doors for you financially in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whether it is in business or in employment, I decree and I declare financial fortune, financial fortune in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Financial fortune. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Receive it. I release money. I release financial fortune in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You shall not struggle. You shall not struggle. You shall not struggle. You shall not struggle. I open up your hands to receive money in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every castle, every financial curse over your life is broken in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I release you to make money. I release you to make money. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You wicked spirit. Broke loose. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You shall make money. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. But says the Lord to you. You're going to make money. But remember that it is God that has blessed you. 10% of what he gives you belongs to him. Do not eat it. It is done. And I wait to hear testimonies. It is done in Jesus' name. Put your hands together. Celebrate Jesus. There are people here who are struggling with relationships. Relationships. They are causing you not to have peace. Relationships at work. Relationships. Just relationships. The enemy has, this is what I see. The enemy has just turned your relationships upside down. It doesn't make sense to you anymore. You don't understand why you're fighting with people. The hand of the enemy is in it. And he's causing you to fight unnecessary warfare with people. I want you to step forward. If that person is you, you need to step forward. We need to lose you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God did not create you for people to fight you. 
step forward, step forward, step forward. I want you to step forward. If you don't step forward, I go to the next category of people. Step forward. Your relationships must be, must be, must be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. These are four people. It's four people. They have relationships around them are very rotten. Four people. There are two more people that are remaining. I need you to step forward. Okay. Me. I am just going to do my work. Are there two people willing to step forward? Okay. I'll pray for these ones that have come. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Your spirit of rejection break in the mighty name of Jesus. Loose! And let her go in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak peace in your relationships in the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit of death, out! In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Nothing around you shall die in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every heavy burden that the enemy has placed on your life, guilt, you wish that there's some things you've done differently, but it has nothing to do with it. It's the enemy playing games with you. As from today, I lose you from it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And your life is refreshed. Your life is refreshed. Every satanic burden on your shoulders is removed in Jesus' mighty name. And your relationships are restored in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I see God bring you a new group of friends. God is going to surround you with new people. You've not met them before, but God is releasing new people in your life. And she's got, he's going to cover you with people that you never imagined in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mm. That spirit that wants to fight you from the home, wants to fight everywhere, it, it, it's a spirit that will not allow you to know peace. I stand as a woman of God to decree and to declare that that spirit is uprooted from your life in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall know peace. You shall walk in peace in the mighty name of the Lord. That says the Lord to you. Thank you, Jesus. I am aligning new people in your life. God is bringing new people in your life but you need to let the past to go you need to release the past let the past go the, your past is not you your past doesn't define you you need to see you the way God is seeing you God is seeing you as his precious son God loves you and he's telling me to tell you that you need to let go of the past he's aligning new relationships for you and he's bringing new people around you and every spirit of heaviness upon you. Loose in the mighty name of Jesus. I release you to a place of peace. To a place of plenty. To a place of joy. To a place of fulfillment. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The month of October is going to be a glorious month for you. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Category number three. There are people who lost somebody. Somebody around your life died. And you've been mourning this person. This person has become a burden to you. You dream with them. You lost somebody that was so close to you. And you've been grieving them. You've overgrieved them that now you're dreaming with the dead. You need to step forward very quickly. You need to step forward. There are one, two, three people. Step forward. You lost somebody. You dream with them. And it's become a captivity. Because every time you dream with them, something good is about to happen to you. That's a good thing. There's one more person. There's one more person. Please step forward. Step forward. You lost somebody. You grieved them so long. Now you dream with that dead person. One more person. Step forward. Okay. Lift up your hands. You have no relationship with the dead. With the dead. Woman of God, come and help me to minister to this too. Thank you, Jesus. You spirit of death, loose in the mighty name of Jesus. Loose in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall not die, but live to declare the goodness of God in the land of the living. 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 This other person, the third person, you're fearing to come forward. 
let me tell you do not mind the people who are here this is your moment of release thank you for stepping forward thank you jesus hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus that spirit of the dead is broken off you in jesus mighty name thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah 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 glory to jesus glory to jesus glory to jesus glory to jesus Rekutiri bahanda rabo shenteri bakai, zekuri bahanda rabo kurianta rabo zeketeri bashanta rabakande, zeakata ikanda rabo zekuteri bashanta rabakuri masi. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for setting your people free. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You will live. You will live. You will live. You will live in the mighty name of Jesus. You will live in the mighty name of Jesus. You will live in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You will live. You will live in the mighty name of Jesus. It's a new dispensation for you. It is a new day for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Man of God, come and sing that song. See what the Lord has done as I continue to minister. Praise and worship come up. Thank you, Jesus. The Spirit of God is so heavy in this place. Ask, it's an open check. Just ask God what you want. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. Oh, what we wait for Come to pass. See what the Lord just lift up your hands and declare in this morning. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. Can you see what the Lord? to your mother and she said that we will see what will become of your children and all of you are struggling it's a, it's a collective family captivity a woman they disagreed with your mother back in the village many years ago and she said let us see what will happen with your children all your whole family your brothers and sisters no one can help the other 
one person, whoever you are, step forward. She swore, she said, we will see. Today that woman will see. Hey! The devil is a liar. Woman of God, continue to minister to them. You spirit of witchcraft, lose in the name of Jesus Christ. of him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ today is a day of deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ miracle worker miracle worker miracle worker come into a miracle a miracle tonight today Come and see a miracle, a miracle today, miracle worker, miracle worker, miracle, you are a miracle worker. Come and do, come and do a miracle, a miracle today. A miracle today, miracle worker, miracle worker, miracle worker, miracle worker. Come and do, come and do a miracle, a miracle today. Come and do a miracle. Today, your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are a miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are a miracle. 
worship you Lion of Judah You are holy Lion of Judah We worship you Lion of Judah You are holy Lion of Judah Lion of Judah We worship you We worship you Lion, Lion of Judah You are holy Lion of Judah moment of miracles. Anyone that is sick, please step forward. Please step forward. If you're sick anywhere, the doctor told you you're sick, this is your time. This is your miracle time. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. If you're sick anywhere, come forward. Receive your miracles. This is the easiest part of this one night with the King. Glory to Jesus. If you're sick, come. It's the easiest part of the night. It's your miracle night. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Is anyone amongst us sick? We are fine. No one with the doctor's report. That means we didn't do our work well. We said bring the sick. So, Pastor Joseph, they didn't bring the sick home. Emotional sickness. Dr. Lali is saying emotional sickness. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to Jesus. So I'm going to have Pastor Ladi just pray for the church, pray for everyone, and then we will end with praise. Praise God. Father, we come to submit this church, MSG Church, Nairobi. Kenya into your hands. Father, we commit this church. Let the church as a church as a whole encounter a new realm of miraculous encounter in the name of Jesus. Let the church move forward in this month. Whatever the church has lost in the spirit realm, let there be a supernatural restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we ask that your angels begin to work 24-7 for behalf of this church from this month of October. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the new things. I speak into the future. There is going to be a breakfast of new things in this church, MSG Church, Nairobi. In the name of Jesus, yes, we Lord. close every door of the enemy coming to attack the church in any way. We close it in the name of Jesus and we open door of overflowing blessings to the members in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. We pray for the members beginning from this first week of October. Let there be turnaround miracles, miracles, all around breakthroughs in this church, MSG, Nairobi, Kenya, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. I want Reverend Isaac Kahora to come and pray for everyone that worked to put this together. It's taken a lot of time, resources, and Reverend Isaac is going to be praying for everyone that gave, that, you know, that just made sure that we are here today to be blessed, man of God. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we give you glory and we give you honor for such an awesome time we have been in your presence, worshiping you, giving you glory and giving you praise and also listening and hearing your voice through your word, O oh God. We are grateful for such a night because it has taken some people who have been committed and very supportive to this work, to this ministry. Jehovah God, every resource, every resources that have been gathered from your people. Right now, I want to commit every single person who have been supportive to what this night in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you may release your special blessings upon them, O oh God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you may renew their strength this day my father as we have stepped in in the month of october according to every prophecy that have been prophesied if they are struggling with things that they have lost we want to declare that jehovah god they will fight them even before they look for them in the mighty name of our lord jesus christ we bless them, O King of all glory. May you increase them in all areas of their life. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we declare increase all around them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May you also bless your servants, O God. That you are positioned in this place, O God. And in this altar, King of all glory. May you continue blessing them. We are grateful for what you have done my father Jehovah God silver and gold belongs to you and may you release them in the hands of your people we are grateful because we believe that already it is done in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy Spirit Amen Let's put our hands together, celebrate Reverend Kahora.
generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and your children and your children Jesus go before you and behind beside you and beside all around you all around, around you and, and with me he's he with you he is with you in the morning in the morning in the evening in your coming in your going no weeping no weeping and rejoice is for you he is for you he is for, he's for you he is 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 for you his face to shine upon you and may the Lord be gracious unto you may his favor be upon you to a thousand of your generations to your family to your children to their children and their children may his favor never lack in your family in the mighty name of Jesus may his presence go before you be behind you be beside you be all around you and be within you. He is with you in the morning and in the evening, in your coming and in your going, in your joy and in your rejoicing. May the Lord be with you in the month of October. I declare you blessed. I declare you lifted. I declare you favored. I declare you prosperous. I declare you considered. Let the people who make sense People of entity consider you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you came with as a challenge here, it is now resolved and you go home to receive testimonies. And now let us share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the presence of the lord forever and ever amen you are blessed do not leave our hospitality has prepared some snacks for us some coffee we need to drink some coffee before we drive and we go to take a road again we have books at the back the god of miracles it's only uh, 2,500 shillings. It's a book about the healing ministry of my spiritual father, Apostle Dr. Charles Ndifon. It has been written by a secular journalist. Somebody who doesn't know God, was not interested in God, but he wanted to find out if miracles were real. So this is a book that somebody who is not born again wrote about God. How credible can that be? And so it's only 2,500 shillings. And every month I do a book club for it. By the time you're through with this book club, miracles become common. They should be common to you. The first thing that Jesus said is that we should drive out demons. Demons is child's bread. Those are the simple things that we should do. So invest in this book, invest in this book. Buy it. Once you buy it, drop me a message and let me know that you've bought it and I can invite you to the close group for the book club. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go to my YouTube channel and subscribe. Why remove faith? And uh, uh, Reverend Kahora, your YouTube channel is? 
Isaac Kahora official. Look for him on Facebook and subscribe. And Israel, Israel Justin on YouTube and subscribe. Did I leave anyone's YouTube channel out? Willie? Willie Mwambota. Go to YouTube and again subscribe. So we're going to have just one song of celebration as we step out. As we step out. Are you willing? Oh, sorry. Yes, YouTube. GOH Global Ministries. Subscribe. That is for Dr. And Mrs. Ladi Ogabo John. Amen. Are you ready to dance? And welcome to October. Hey, here we are. Ooh. God has kept us. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them, welcome to October. Welcome to October. Imagine, this is October. Ay, 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 ay. Welcome to October. Welcome to October. Amen. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What the Lord has done for me. It shall be permanent. Somebody say, it shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What the Lord has done for me. It shall be permanent. Somebody say, say, it shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What the Lord has done for me. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What the Lord has done for me. It shall be permanent. Somebody say, It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What the Lord. What the Lord has done for me, eh, eh. it shall be, it shall be permanent, permanent, it shall be permanent, eh. it shall be permanent. What the Lord has done for me, it shall be permanent, it shall be glorious, it shall be glorious. It shall be glorious. Who's the Lord? Say, what the Lord has done for me. Eh, eh. It shall be glorious. Somebody say it again. It shall be glorious. It shall be glorious. What the Lord has done for me. It shall be It shall be beautiful, beautiful. It shall be beautiful. Hey. It shall be beautiful What the Lord has done for me It shall be shall be mighty It shall be mighty It shall be mighty What the Lord What the Lord has done for me It shall be It shall be It shall be permanent It shall be permanent it shall be permanent. What the Lord, what the Lord has done for me. It shall be, it shall be permanent. It shall be relevant, tangible, touchable. What the Lord has done today. It shall be permanent. Hey, it shall be tangible. Touchable Woo! and feasible. Woo! What the Lord has done for us, He shall be permanent. Everybody say, It shall be permanent. Everybody say, It shall be permanent. What the Lord, what the Lord has, has done for me, 